Hey there, my name is Anthony Romano, and in this video I'm going to explain gluconeogenesis on keto very, very quickly within a couple of minutes so you can understand it and whether or not you should be afraid of it. So gluconeogenesis, a lot of people are afraid of this on keto and this is part of one of the biggest myths on keto and the two biggest myths on keto are that you need to eat a shitload of fat or else you won't be in ketosis and you need to eat a small amount of protein or else you won't be in ketosis. Those are the two biggest myths and you don't want to have a video on that too. So I have a video also that's called what happens if you eat too much protein on keto. So if you're somebody who searched for the reverse first and you're just looking up gluconeogenesis because you heard about it then this is going to have a little bit more of a twist on that. So creating new glucose, gluconeogenesis, is a process that occurs in your body when you're on keto. And when you're on keto, what happens is basically your body is going to turn a certain amount of protein into glucose every single day. And this is good. You want this because what this does is it's going to store that glucose in your muscles so you can have carb energy and fat energy at the same time. This is very good and it gets better in your body after about a month or so when you're fat adapted. So people are afraid that this is, if you eat too much protein, this is going to stimulate gluconeogenesis. This is not true. What happens basically is your body's gonna take a set amount every single day and convert a certain amount of the protein you're eating into glucose from which it is going to be stored in your, energy, in your reserves. And Maybe it'll do some other processes as well, right? That require glucose. Maybe a small part of your brain will run on glucose, right? Certain things like that. So with gluconeogenesis, people think if you eat an extra 30 grams of protein a day, it's going to ruin ketosis. So this is not necessarily true. There's not gonna be any more gluconeogenesis. If you just live your life, your body's going to, in a keto metabolism, your body's going to take a certain amount every single day on a need basis, not you're not able to stimulate this gluconeogenesis. Well, you can stimulate gluconeogenesis if you're basically eating only proteins. But the thing is that it's not something you have to worry about for the majority of people. Because here's what happens. If you train really hard one day, your protein and glucose needs are going to raise. So your body's gonna take a little bit more protein than it normally does and convert that into glucose. And it's going to do that regardless of what you're eating. So if you only eat 50 grams of protein that day, if it has to take 30 grams of protein and convert it into glucose, it will do that. If you're eating 150 grams of protein that day, it will take 30 grams of protein and do that. Right? So I'm just playing out, just making it easy for you to understand here. Okay? So the amount of protein you're eating isn't going to make gluconeogenesis a problem. It's going to feed the hunger that gluconeogenesis will have basically in your lifestyle. So there is a concern with some protein sources that they will raise your insulin too much if you, you know, down too many whey protein shakes on keto. And I have a video on this as well, whey protein on keto. Basically, there is a concern if you're consuming very insulinogenic proteins on their own on a keto diet. Because if you're consuming insulinogenic proteins on their own without other macros to diminish that insulin response, right? Because combining protein that's insulinogenic with fat and example like greens would lower and dampen the insulin response of like a whey protein for example and that would be good because when insulin is cranked up your fat burning is turned off so that is how this thing commonly gets turned right and skewed so with gluconeogenesis right which is creating glucose through proteins this is a set amount that occurs every single day in your body and maybe that amount will increase if you do more training right but the point is, it's not a problem. It's not going to kick you out of ketosis because your body's doing it. It's a part of ketosis. It's going to happen every single day, no matter what. And it, if anything, should be an indication for you to get enough protein so that it's not going to come from your muscles. Now, when you're on keto, you're less likely to use your own protein and muscles as an energy source. This is what ketones do in your body. Scientists don't know why, but they know that it happens. It prevents your body from using protein as an energy source. It makes it much less likely. And the last thing I'll say is the myth that you 
can have too much protein on a keto diet all comes from the original studies on keto, which were with children with epilepsy, and they needed to have very low protein and very high fat because that created more ketones in their blood, which would prevent them from having seizures. So unless you have a serious medical condition that requires you to have high ketones, basically the myth that too low or too high amounts of protein will prevent ketosis is all bogus. Basically, you're going to be in ketosis as long as you're cutting out carbs. And from there, the amounts of protein that you're eating, it's really all about the fat. If you're eating more fat, you're going to be in deeper ketosis. But that inherently means that less of your calories are coming from protein. So basically, what this all means is, primary thing, cut out carbs. From there, the amount of fat you're eating, if it's 80%, is going to be very high ketones, right? And as a byproduct of 80%, you're having 20% protein. So people thought, oh yeah, low protein is the key. No, higher fat would be the key to more ketones. So from there, if you're having 60% fat, for example, and then you go, say, 40% protein, you'd still be in ketosis. It's just that you wouldn't be in as deep of a level of ketosis because higher fat will make it the case. So you only have to worry about protein affecting your ketosis in so far to the point where it's your fat quantity that's being diminished too low because you're having too high protein. So basically, don't worry about it. It's fine. That's the reason why, because your fats are going to be the primary driver of ketosis after you've cut out the carbs and your proteins are just going to play into that. So hopefully that made things clear for you. Hopefully that gave you an insight to gluconeogenesis. If you want to take my free keto meal plan and training plan, take them there in the description. And also I have a 60 day keto transformation challenge, which you can join as well for free, possibly win some prizes. If you're interested, give it up some ketones and overall leave a comment. I'll answer you subscribe, click the notification bell and that's it for this one. Peace.